Hello my friends, Walter here, doing a bit of a Google search. In my last vlog I mentioned a little bit about being in bad weather and stuff. Today I'm thinking about back when I was in the Navy and I'm searching the track of Hurricane Inez back in 1966. Towards the end of the year it was a late storm. You can see she came from way out towards Africa somewhere. I was on the USS Chicana at the time, and we were in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Well, this is Cuba right here where I'm moving my cursor. The south side of Cuba right about here is Guantanamo Bay. So it came through the Virgin Islands over here, came across the Dominican Republic, and hit directly into Guantanamo Bay, and went up through Cuba and crossed over east of Florida and then came across the Keys headed towards Mexico. I think something like a thousand people died in this storm. And for a while there we thought we might be among them. Uh, you can see over here on this Google map, uh, it's not a Google map, it's one of the weather channels. And according to this chart here, this pink chart, pink color on the track here, the winds were anywhere from 130 to 155 miles an hour still when it hit Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. That's the strongest part of the storm. Hurricane Inez was a late season major hurricane that affected the Caribbean, Bahamas, Florida, and Mexico. It was the first storm on record to affect all of these areas. It originated from a tropical wave in Africa and became a tropical depression September 21st. September 24th, the storm strengthened the hurricane was quickly intensified when it struck the French overseas region of Guadalupe. The damage in Guadalupe was estimated at $50 million. There were 40 deaths there. On September 28th that day, a hurricane hunter's flight reported a gust of 197 mile per hour wind was the highest recorded at the time. Continuing westward, Inez made landfall in a small hurricane in Barahona Peninsula of the Dominican Republic. There the storm flooded many rivers, destroyed 800 houses nationwide. There were about 100 deaths, 12 million in damage after affecting the country. I it struck southward, southwest Haiti, where it considered to be the worst hurricane since the 1920s. As many as a thousand people were killed and 60,000 were left homeless. Though it re-intensified from a major hurricane striking southwest Cuba on September 30th. No, that, not, that puts a date to my story, September 30th. And my story today relates to this storm as I remember it. My time during the Navy was strictly spent in what they call mine land. I was, I was on four different mine sweepers. I was on coastal minesweepers and ocean-going minesweepers. The USS Tucana was a Falcon-class coastal minesweeper. Displacement 362 tons, length 144 feet, beam 27 feet wide, draft 12 feet, propulsion two 600 horsepower Packard diesel engines. In other words, it was a pretty small ship. It was made out of wood, kind of like the Mayflower, you know. Wooden ships are less likely to set off a magnetic mine from the pull of a metal ship going by. So you might imagine with a 12-foot draft, draft is how much ship is below the water line. You might imagine one with a 12-foot draft might get a little hard to ride on in heavy seas. And I guarantee you when the weather got bad, the, the jacana was like being on a bucking bronco. I'll touch a little bit on what our duties were. We patrol the coast of Cuba. We'd stay out a week and come in port for a week and swap out with another ship, constantly looking for the Russian. This was during the Russian Missile Crisis. And uh, we monitored all shipping in the area to find out what they were carrying, whether they were bringing missiles or whatever into Cuba. We were serious about keeping track of the shipping in the area. When you're sailing in smooth seas, a minesweeper is a dream to ride on. I like riding around on a yacht. 
But in heavy seas, it was a different story entirely. We spent many a day seasick when it got really bad. When Hurricane Inez came and hit us at Cuba, we were in port. Nowadays, the Navy will evacuate their fleet if they know ahead of time a hurricane's going to hit, their bad weather. They're just moving them on, on up the coast somewhere to get them out of the path of the storm. We didn't have all the modern satellite facilities they got nowadays. We got caught right in the path of the hurricane. Well, you can't leave a ship tied up to the pier in a hurricane. You're liable to wind up on the beach somewhere. So we had to go out into Guantanamo Bay and drop our anchors at the far side of the bay. Drop both anchors out there, and when the storm hit, it was bad. We had to stay below decks as much as we could. At one point, the Jucana was dragging anchor across that bay. I forget how many feet per minute, but it was like moving on, even though it was at full anchor. Well, when the storm subsided and passed on by after a day or two there, we tried to pull the anchors in. Now, you got to kind of understand what the situation was in Guantanamo Bay. A Navy base... I, I gotta assume they had no place, no p place to dump their trash and things like that. I don't remember ever seeing a dump there. So where did that trash wind up? On the bottom of Guantanamo Bay, that's where it wound up. We tried to pull our anchors in, found out our one anchor was tangled up with the other anchor, all tied in knots. But we had dragged across that bay, our anchors, and scooped up cables and pieces of ships and hunks of metal and it was just tons of steel cables dumped out there in the bottom of Guantanamo Bay wound up wrapped around our anchor chains. I spent hours and hours hanging off a boatswain's chair off the forecastle, cutting cables and metal off the anchor chains where we could slowly work in the anchor one foot at a time. You can picture Walter hanging from a boatswain's chair out over the open ocean amongst a bunch of cables and metal with a cutting torch. Over the years at the railroad, they did a lot of cutting torch work, but especially at train wrecks, but that was my first real experience at doing a lot of cutting torch work. I got some other stories I can share about the area down there. Maybe I'll get to them one of these days, but today I was just thinking about, about that. I appreciate you listening to me carry on. It's Walter signing off for now.